Physics, it might be fascinating, but what's it actually good for? I'm on a mission to find out from those who use it every day. Welcome to the Physics Job Hunt. Today I'm talking to my pal Ross. I know that he's done some interesting things after studying A-level physics and then engineering at university, but I wanted to find out a bit more. Hi, I'm Ross. Uh, I am a design engineer for Rolls-Royce. I previously have worked as a design engineer at Dyson and also as a research engineer at DSDL, which is the Defence Science and Technology Laboratories. In my current job, I work across uh, Rolls-Royce's suite of military aerospace engines uh, for anything from uh, Merlin, which is used on Spitfire and Lancaster bombers back in World War II, through to EJ-200, which is used on the Eurofighter Typhoon nowadays. But my job is to look at the uh, manufacturing processes that are in place for the parts and to determine whether or not we can relax some of those to make it easier for manufacturers to actually uh, produce those parts for us and still manage to keep the engines safe. I mean, I do love it. Um, it's quite an interesting variety of um, pieces of work that I work on. Uh, one day I'll be working on a combustion chamber for an engine and another day I'll be working on a turbine and the problems that come in will be so wildly varied that it gives me a lot of unique challenges through my work. Uh, the biggest part of it is all the problem solving of working out can we do this, can we not do this, whether we've got a part that we want to change how we manufacture it so that we're making it from a different material, is that acceptable, or whether we've got a part that actually we've made the holes too big, can we still accept it as it is. Very cool. But what was that about the Defence Science and Technology Laboratory? Is this a if I tell you I'd have to kill you kind of situation? So my first graduate job was with the Defence Science and Technology Laboratory. Um, I started off as a instrumentation engineer. I spent three months doing that, which was uh, using high-speed video cameras, uh, pressure manometers and pressure sensors and thermocouples and things like that to take readings of uh, energetic events, so explosives and explosion testing. That We were doing a lot of research around that. Some of that work has actually led to a couple of patents for me as well. So I've actually got two patents, which is really cool, uh, and I really love that. One of the pieces of work that I've got a patent for is the transfer of a flashbang, looking at alternative ways of managing to produce that so that we're not using energetics to try and make things safer. Flashbang, by nature, is an explosive device. It has an explosive element and some other chemicals in there in order to make it go bang really loudly, which is the explosive part, and then the flash is caused by some of the chemicals in there. Uh, we were looking at ways that we could produce those similar effects but without using an energetic device in order to reduce the risk factors associated with it. Well, I'm sure the bad guys will be grateful for that next time SWAT call round. So what kind of thing does an engineer do at Dyson then? It was looking at things like, you know, how much hair does a vacuum cleaner suck up? or how much fan force do you get, how much flow can you feel from a fan, things like that, and, and even novel projects as well. So things that haven't been released yet from Dyson, um, I was looking at tests in order to see whether or not they work and see how well they work so that we can show the world how good the products are at Dyson. Sounds even more top secret. I was curious though, how much does physics play a part in these jobs? So physics is a big part of my day-to-day -day job. Um, there's the dynamics of how things interact, um, as well as uh, being jet engine manufacturer, we have a lot of physics of uh, looking at the um, pressure and velocity and temperature effects of how we make an engine perform. Um, I recently did a training course on how to build a whole engine. You look at how the air comes into the engine cold, nice and dense, and then how that flows through the engine. You compress it and squeeze it down more using the PVNRT um, principle, and then you add some um, heat to that in combustion with some fuel, mix that together, and then you expand that gas again out of the other end. And that is the principle of how a jet engine works. And so everything we do is related down to that PV equals NRT principle, really. On a day-to-day -day basis, yeah, it's how things interact, how the mechanical properties of things are, forces, stresses, things like that, it's, there's so much. It's an underlying principle that you don't necessarily realise you're even using half the time as well. Back at DSTL, our research was all heavily involved around physics in order to calculate pressure and expansion rates and things like that for explosives as things were expanding out you'd be able to calculate and know how fast things were. One of the events that we did was actually um, measuring detonation velocity. You get um, a critical diameter for an explosive, what the minimum constrained diameter of a, an explosive can be and you can watch this in high speed and you can see as the explosive initiates you can actually see the flash progress through this tube and you can calculate how powerful the explosive is based on that. 
Naturally, I just had to ask Ross whether or not he'd recommend physics at A-level. Uh, do it. It's great fun. It's not as laborious and scary as people would suggest. That It's got such a stigma associated with it that people think, oh, physics, it's all looking at space and not understanding what's going on out there and big calculations. But there is a lot of practical work involved with it as well. I definitely enjoyed the practical side of things. Um, so even though there is theory behind it, you can sort of see and understand how things work. If you've got any problem solving in you, definitely a good idea. I also asked Ross, what else might he consider doing? It can go all over the place, really, can't it, with it? I've got a friend who's doing a degree and they're looking at environmental sustainability. So it's not really the same as engineering in the way that I do engineering. And even engineering itself is quite a broad topic. Um, but I don't think that doing physics precludes you from anything, really. It's such a pure topic. Applying it anywhere is quite easy to do. Astronautics, things like that. So stuff to do with space is quite cool as well. Um, I quite like the idea of looking at satellites and things like that. Um, if I was to do something completely different, yeah. It'd be nice if I got to actually go out and test and you know go for a flight in a spaceship. That'd be quite cool. But maybe I'll get to test a jet engine at some point. So next time you have a battlefield moment, you can thank Ross for those reliable jet engines, more considerate flashbangs, and even the vacuum that's used to clean up the mess afterwards. See you next time for another physics job hunt. Physics.